professional standards of the organization itself or the profession might dictate how one should? We have professional standards, organizational standards, um, uh, uh, research standards, things like that. Okay. What else? We have an IRB involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, yeah. this is. It's you know, a good question. The IRB, the stipulations and the, the protocol put forth by the IRB and what they approved and what they applied for. This is now becoming a complex issue with regard to collaboration because you have a PI, the former technician. Did anyone else work on this project? Have people's roles been defined? Have their accomplishments on the project been defined? And what can you expect taking over the project with regard to responsibilities and credit? Okay. And, and that. That pulls us into the, the third question in this framework. So what questions do you, uh, do you need or want to ask when presented with something like this? Uh, so what are, what are some of the things? So one, kind of what are the roles uh, that, that are coming to play? What else? You already suggested talking about um, the research coordinator and some maybe some background. Why did the research coordinator leave? Um, were there personality conflicts? Uh, kind of background, contextual information will help us um, think through this scenario. It's coming to my mind, like where to go and who to ask. Okay. Like these two, like you know, sometimes you have a baby position and you don't want to make all that drama talking to everyone. Yeah. Who is the responsible and to talk and then to do a position to this kind of very sensitive, right? So who's the next person who's yeah. outside the lab to, yeah. to bring the concerns up? Or who is the institution to be responsible Okay. Or taking care of that problem. Even mm -hmm. here, even outside. Right, because maybe yeah. nobody else in the lab may know this is going on. So what do you want to do uh -huh. next? Who should you need to who do you need to talk to? What you need to tell them. Okay. Which also makes me think, is there a more neutral way to look at this data? Is there um, data from the FMR, FMRI itself? Um, that technician. was collected hey, from hey, a is different there way. I don't have experience with this is a problem too. Right. The expertise part or Field itself. Yeah. So you're the new postdoc in this lab. Um, how could you be affected by something like this? Well, probably to minimize, well, I don't want to say minimize your impact, but or, or to clarify the situation, what you should probably do is start off by defining everything that you know. So here's the data that we have, here are the subjects that we have, here are the data that we lack, that we're lacking. Is it appropriate to do any analysis on the data that's existing with such an incomplete data set, but define it in writing and present that to the PI? So, what resources are available? Well, you have the data, and you have the PI, and anyone else that's worked on the project. But could we go to all those resources and define all aspects of what? The existing project has before, and, and potentially make a plan and move forward. But this is actually listed in one of the takeaway lessons in the resources that are gathered for this particular two-minute challenge, and it's suggested that this is a first step. That that information gathering process, where you lay out everything that you know about this scenario, is really where you need to start first. And I, I appreciate that. Um, one thing that I think you're getting at is that you don't have enough specific information yet with this scenario, right? Um, so you need to gather some information about the facts, the rules, the personalities that are involved in this situation. I think another thing to think about, if you presented this in a classroom, how could this be modified or changed for a subject, a different subject? So if you were in one of the STEM fields, how could you, uh, you know, with this work? Or if you were in a social sciences, or if you were in education, you know, you can kind of see how this can be tailored to um, a faculty member specific research or um, an issue surrounding that, um, what's going on there. So you kind of see how it starts this conversation. Uh, you, know, we're, you know, what other data do we need? Who do we need to involve? What questions do we have? Um, those types of things. Um, so I guess one of the last ones is, so what do you think you should do? Uh, if you were this postdoc, what are you going to do? Um, if you're presented with this information. Okay, Marianne started this off, she said some information gathering. You also suggested thinking, pre-thinking maybe about some questions that you might ask the PI. And that's suggested as one of the takeaway lessons as well. 
Something that I think is so interesting that this particular resource um, suggests is practicing. Um, asking questions in a non-threatening, non-offensive way is a part of that information gathering process. Certainly you don't want to alienate the PI. You've just joined this lab. Perhaps your former PhD advisor, you're the postdoc here, maybe your former advisor would be of assistance to you and would be a neutral source that would help you to think through this situation. So who are your allies? Who can you go to think about this situation neutrally? Practice maybe asking some questions before you jump into some hot water, potentially. A lot depends on what we're trying to do with it. Right. With six samples, it's enough preliminary data for sketching out a proposal, but that's not paper. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to try to do with this? Mm -hmm. This is big time on what I need to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it's the perfect question to ask the PI, right? Right away is you just started in the lab and all you really did was proofread numbers to make sure they matched and you were listed as an author without even knowing it. Right. That's great. So do you qualify for authorship? Mm -hmm. what, what is authorship? <coughs> other issues? Anybody else have other issues to identify? Your considerations were, weren't actually taken, and yet you were still stuck on as an author. Therefore, it's kind of a ghost authorship almost. Okay. Actually, yeah. another thing I wanted to point out was, and I don't this might differ across disciplines, but the two authors that were listed were the postdoc and the student, but it doesn't say that the PI was an author, which in my field would be very odd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> so, so many of the issues do surround the central topic here of authorship, right, and how authorship is defined and um, perhaps defined on a disciplinary context, um, but what, what counts or quantifies. What's the motivation for him to do this? That's the question. Is it falsified data you were just double checking or who knows? And if it was falsified data, being stuck on as a growth author with no contribution whatsoever could damage your reputation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Down the road, that's where I was thinking about further on down the road. If he, he says, oh, yeah, great, you know what I mean? You know. Right. Then later on down the road, uh, hey, how about taking this information? Let's look at it. And all of a sudden, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it, it could be harmful later on in his future. So perhaps he's opened himself up to some risk. Exactly. Here. So um, what is the account kind of kind of been alluded to, but what, what rules and regulations do you think apply? And we'll just move over to, to this next group. What do you all think initially? Um, code of conduct of that respective journal that's being... Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's been compromised. The, 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 yeah, the submission rules and the, the editorial rules, things like that with the journal. Um, could be, you know, about your profession, not just the journalistic rules, but your professional rules and integrity. What else? It could be impacted. What else? Uh, anybody Maybe like? We use more ethics, which is pretty much it. You, you start kind of looking, turning a blind eye to deaf ear before you know it. You're, you know, you got to fix something. Feel, it. Depending on what the, uh, on what that paper, that publication might contribute to, it might have an effect on a uh, population or something like that later on down the line, depending on what it's doing. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and then then one thing that uh, came out with me. Um, what about the next author that references, you know, this work too? Um, is that going to go beyond? You know, are you going to impact somebody else's, not just this lab, but somebody else? You know, what kind of regulations apply there? I want to go over here. Did y'all have some? So the next question, um, what do you want to ask? Um, uh, what do you need or want to ask? So this group, what do y'all think initially? Why am I on it? Where are you not on? <laughs> right. There you go. Two two big questions. Um, what made the PI keep his name off of off of the the article? Uh, and, and me being in the lab for twenty four hours, uh, what gave what made you the right? right was this on purpose or was this just some miscommunication between the supervisor and the postdoc about put the name on the paper and send it? Mm -hmm. 
because that's possible. Mm -hmm. Got mistranslated somewhere. But yeah, that's what I want to know is why I'm on it, why you're not on it, because that's what I think should be going on here. What else? How can I get my name off of the paper? Okay. And get it get it retracted or right. modified later on. I have to wonder what an undergraduate feel empowered to ask these questions of faculty members and supervisors. I might be scared. Uh -huh. I thank you for pointing that out, Allison, because I, I think that's easily skipped. It, this is an undergraduate research intern, so this is scary, I think, for that young student in this situation. But I, I love, um, I love what we're getting at. Um, with, if we step back and think about talking about these issues with our students now, this is the idea of. Um, asking our students to forecast, asking them to think about these scenarios now in small bits so that perhaps when they find themselves in this scenario, they're more prepared. Um, if, if nothing but to go to someone else and ask, to seek resources, to go to someone um, with research integrity and, and um, the resources that we have on campus and, and the ombudsman, etc., and ask, what do I do in this scenario? How intimidating. <coughs> Let's go quickly to the, the next couple, and then we'll come back to the presentation. So, um, so this group. So, what what resources are available to you um, to work through a situation like this? Well, if the lab supervisor is not your advisor, you could go to your advisor and say, "Hey, this is what happened. Can you help me? What can I do? Who do I need to talk to?" If you don't feel comfortable talking it with the the lab supervisor or the staff. You can always, it was mentioned the ombuds, which is an actual student resolution center here as opposed to ombuds. There's not actually student ombuds. But I would suggest going there where they could actually take it up and set up a meeting for the UCS. Yeah. So kind of going back to the previous mm -hmm. scenario, who's that safe third party that you could, the student as an undergrad, and feel comfortable going to uh, and, and taking it up the next level? Okay. Uh, as an undergraduate student, do you know what options you have? Well, there's there's the obvious one. Do a happy dance that you got credit. Absolutely. Add your, add Put it on your own responsibility. <laughs> Next article, use your middle initial instead of. <laughs> so so finally, you know, uh, what are you going to do? What what do you, what do you think the student uh, should do in a situation like this? Definitely should start asking questions. When when you get that inkling that something's not quite right, it's that's not where you're heading to say. So the takeaway lesson that's listed on the resource I think is, is particularly well done with this one um, and it's simple. It says authorship carries privileges and responsibilities. It's your obligation to stand behind publications that have your name on them. If you're not able to do that, you should not be an author. So I, I just want to keep coming back to the resources that are offered to you with these two-minute challenges. Um, you know, everything from the, the question methodology that's laid out um, to the questions that you might ask students to consider, then to some takeaway summary type lessons that are included here. And I think that gets at the bottom line.